In the languid swath of sunset, as shadows deepened into an indecipherable language of fear, the quaint town of Hempstead palpitated with an almost imperceptible dread. Houses nestled close, huddling like ancient conspirators, their eyes glazed windows, peering at the figure maneuvering through the town square. This was Abel, a young journalist, a beacon of curiosity illuminating the gloom of his own haunted past. With his roving eyes, generous smile, and an aura of dogged determination, he embodied the spirit of a man in pursuit of a story yet untold. Abel, despite the whispers of his own suffering, bore an infectious charisma, endearing him to the townsfolk. Yet beneath the congenial exterior was a maelstrom of memories that clung to his psyche, spectral cobwebs whispering tales of depression and torment. He bore these invisible scars with silent courage, his resolve hardened in their crucible. Evening, Abel, a robust woman, Mrs. Netherby, greeted from her porch, her eyes a mirror of veiled concern. In the company of her and many others, financial motivation found an unlikely companion, empathy. Good evening, Mrs. Netherby, he responded, the sincerity in his voice resonating in the silence that followed. His conversation, a blend of inquiry and cordial chat, probed subtly towards the matter casting a shadow over the town. The seemingly innocuous junkyard nestled at the town's edge. Each uttered word around it was hushed, whispers caught in throats, glances stolen in its direction, riddled with unease. He absorbed their fear, the undercurrents of their hushed tones drawing a map towards his unvoiced destination. In the homely refuge of the local tavern, under the dim glow of a solitary lantern, he encountered Tom, the town's self-proclaimed historian, a man of weathered years and sagely knowledge. Tom, Abel began, the conversation weaving naturally toward the subject of his interest. Why does everyone act so strange about the junkyard? Tom's face drained of its color, his jovial demeanor now replaced with an almost imperceptible grimace. That place ain't right, Abel. Ain't no good comes from snooping around there. The raw fear in Tom's voice, his hesitance to articulate further, intensified Abel's intrigue. His journalistic instinct hinted at a story buried beneath the layers of fear and superstition. As he thanked him and exited the tavern, his gaze drifted toward the junkyard's silhouette, a monstrous figure obscured by the encroaching night. The town's hidden dread had settled on him, a specter whispering chilling tales into his ears. And as he retreated into his new abode, his dreams began to churn with anticipation and anxiety. He was on a precipice, the echo of the unknown yawning at his feet, ready to plunge into the world that lay beneath the unassuming facade of Hempstead. As the moon ascended its throne, casting long and wavering shadows over the sleep-claimed town, he found himself in the tightening grip of restless slumber. His dreams were a tableau of the day's experiences, the palpable unease of the town, the fear-cloaked junkyard, and Tom's warning. As the tendrils of morning light began to caress the sky, he was already resolved to confront the terror veiling the town, stepping into the next chapter of his fated journey. The morning sun bloomed over Hempstead, casting long shadows that recoiled from the rusting fence surrounding the junkyard. Abel, emboldened by the clarity of daylight, found himself on the periphery of this place shrouded in ominous whisperings. The entrance gate, gnarled and weather-beaten, was a reluctant guardian, keeping the world at bay. His heart thrummed an anticipatory rhythm in his chest as he crossed the threshold. His eyes fell upon heaps of discarded artifacts, remnants of forgotten eras, rust-claimed vestiges that veiled a reality far beyond the realm of understanding. The yard breathed a melange of rusted metal and rotting wood, stale air carrying cryptic tales of the past. As his gaze roamed over the junkyard, he noticed strange alien-like objects incongruous amidst the wreckage. Some held a cold, almost eerie luminescence, their shapes disturbingly organic, as though carved by hands not of this world. An inexplicable chill passed through him as he held them, an uncanny sensation that bore into his sanity's edges. Further exploration unveiled worn-out parchments filled with an indecipherable language, odd symbols, and eerie drawings suggestive of grotesque, unearthly beings. There was an unsettling aura around these objects, 
a haunting melody that sang of ancient secrets and dreadful prophecies. Strange artifacts you've got here, he murmured during an unexpected encounter with the yard's taciturn owner, a man named Rook, whose gaze was an abyss of secrets. Rook, a wiry figure cloaked in age-worn fabric, looked at him. His eyes held the luster of a predatory bird. Found them over the years, he responded, his voice a low growl. Different folks, different junk, not for meddling journalists. Rook's stolid demeanor didn't deter Abel. Instead, he found a peculiar fascination with the man's dismissive attitude. With each passing interaction, each subtle evasion, his determination was galvanized. As the day waned and evening crept in, he found himself confronted by the terrors of his dreams. The unearthly artifacts, the coded messages, the cryptic symbols, and now the hushed whispers of an alien language gnawed at his sleep. His dreams, once a realm of tranquility, were besieged by hallucinatory specters, chimeras of the objects he'd found, and the secrets he'd unearthed. The junkyard began to occupy a larger space in his consciousness, the hitherto unnoticed apprehension now snowballing into tangible fear. But Abel, the steadfast seeker of truth, was undeterred. As he looked out from his window at the distant silhouette of the junkyard under the ghostly moonlight, he found his resolve unshaken, his spirit untamed. The dawn would bring new revelations and new challenges. It was time to plunge deeper into the enigma that was Hempstead, to confront the tenebrous depths that threatened to consume his sanity. Little did he know of the grim realities that awaited him in the coming days, of the impending darkness that was yet to unfold. The sky wept its morning tears upon the verdant scape of Hempstead as Abel, armed with an unwavering spirit, stepped into the engulfing maw of another day. The junkyard, under the melancholic veil of the rain, felt alien, an entity born out of a delirious dream, yet terrifyingly tangible. He was drawn to it, a moth entranced by the grotesque allure of a cosmic flame. Through relentless effort, in the long hours of deciphering the symbols, he unearthed a prophecy, a tale of ancient calamity whispered in hushed terror. The junkyard, he discovered, was not just a burial ground for relics, but a shrine to an unthinkable deity, a harbinger of doom that thrived in the fabric of nightmares. He understood now the abnormal behavior of the town, the cryptic fear, the reverence, all pointed towards the birth of a terrifying reality. As he delved further, he discovered, to his growing horror, the town's prestigious families were deeply interwoven with the ancient cult. Their legacy was not of riches or power, but of an unholy pact with an inscrutable cosmic horror. The smuggling operation was just a veil to hide the unimaginable truth from prying eyes. The townsfolk began to shift in his presence, their demeanor, once friendly, now hostile, their eyes harboring a savage gleam. This was no longer the town he had known. The very fabric of reality seemed to distort around him, and the boundaries of sanity started to blur. I told you, Abel, ain't no good comes from snooping around. Tom, now an embodiment of terror, spoke, his voice barely a whisper. His eyes reflected a deep-rooted fear that ran through the veins of Hempstead. The town was not only a victim, but also a willing accomplice to the unfolding horror. I have to stop it, Tom. I can't let it come into our world, Abel replied, his voice faltering under the weight of the revelation. Tom's response, a helpless stare, the resigned acceptance of a doomed fate, propelled him to act, his sense of duty transforming into a manic need to thwart the impending horror. As days blurred into nights, his dreams began to twist into feverish nightmares, populated by monstrous figures and the omnipresent whisper of an otherworldly language. His depression, his own personal specter, emerged stronger in the face of these horrors, pushing him further into the abyss of despair. As he gazed out at the silent town, the moon casting an ethereal pallor upon the buildings, the junkyard stood as a malignant tumor in the landscape. He knew beneath the benign facade of Hempstead, an ancient evil pulsed, ready to rupture into a horrifying reality. The morning sun would soon rise and with it, the time of reckoning. The town and its people, now unrecognizable, were waiting as was the cosmic horror beneath the junkyard. He knew he would have to confront the darkness, stepping into the final act of the grim tale. 
A dismal silence reigned as the dawn peeled back the night's shroud. It was a silence that echoed through the deserted streets of Hempstead, swallowing the whispers of the wind and the song of the waking birds. It was as if the town held its breath, anticipating the dire climax that the day promised. Abel stood before the rusting gates of the junkyard, the palpable dread weighing heavier than ever. But the shadow of fear was outrun by the light of his persistence, his will to put an end to the nightmare. He moved forward, his heart pounding a dreadful rhythm against his ribs, his skin kissed by the cold chill of impending doom. Rook was waiting, a sinister sentinel of the horrific shrine. His eyes bore into Abel, an inscrutable gaze that held centuries of secrets and despair. You can't stop it, Abel. It's older than this town, older than the world itself, he rasped, his voice as cold and grating as rusted metal. With a steely resolve, Abel retorted, I have to try, Rook. This isn't just about me. It's about everyone here. It's about reality itself. Rook, a figure gnarled by time and tainted by cosmic horror, simply nodded, his expression vacant, resigned to the inevitable. He opened the gates to the unseen, the tenebrous heart of the junkyard, where dread resided and birthed its monstrous offspring. As Abel ventured deeper, the rusted remnants of the past gave way to an otherworldly spectacle. An alien obelisk, throbbing with an eerie glow, stood in the center of a grotesque arrangement of artifacts, emitting whispers that strummed at the cords of his sanity. Here, the borders of reality buckled and warped, revealing the pulsating, malignant heart of the ancient horror. His blood froze in his veins, his breath caught in his throat, and yet he moved forward, compelled by his own mortality, driven by an insatiable need to stave off the cosmic terror. The words from the decoded prophecy resounded in his mind, a chant of banishment, a plea to the universe to keep the ancient evil at bay. He recited the chant, his voice growing louder, rebounding off the artifacts that reverberated with an alien hum. The obelisk responded, its luminescence pulsating violently, the whispers escalating into a cacophonous wail that tore at the fabric of his mind. In the throes of the cosmic confrontation, the boundary of his sanity teetered. His depression, once a spectral shadow, now roared into a tangible force, intertwining with the unutterable terror that bore down on him. His vision blurred, the world spun, and he fell into the churning vortex of his own mind, consumed by darkness. As his consciousness flickered, he saw the figures of the townsfolk, their eyes reflecting the monstrous spectacle. His last thoughts were not of fear, but a crushing sense of despair, a sorrow for the town that succumbed to a dread too potent to resist. His last breath left his lips in a gasping whisper, his body surrendering to the overwhelming terror. The once buoyant spirit, he was claimed by the cosmic horror, his tail swallowed in the gaping maw of Hempstead's secret. As the sun set on the day, the town that dreaded sundown slipped back into its eerie rhythm the ominous quiet interrupted only by the distant, mournful howl of the wind. A tragic testament to the insurmountable forces that lie beyond the veil of understanding. The insidious presence beneath reality. A chilling reminder of the cosmic horrors that sleep, stirring only when disturbed by the curious and the brave. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe to our channel, where you can find more similar stories and click on the bell icon to never miss one. There is plenty more cosmic horror to come from the Eldritch Tales factory. Stay tuned and until next time.